She continued to have her diploma in public health at Kolebu School of Public Health in 2001. In 2005, she went ahead to get a diploma in reproductive health in developing countries at the School of Tropical Medicine in Liverpool, UK. No wonder Liverpool are watching us. Yeah. In 2011, she had her BSc Public Health at University of Cape Coast. She again went to Korea Health Industry Development Institute in 2012 for family planning and maternal and child health care program, which was organized by the Korea International Cooperation Agency. In 2014, she graduated from the only university with an MPH. In 2018, she acquired certificates in leadership and management and also clinical management of HIV from University of Washington, USA. Our lady chair also obtained a certificate in adolescent health at the School of Tropical Medicines in exactly. She again had her second master's in degree or her second master's degree in clinical leadership and management from the University of has 30 years working experience wow. in the health sector. Wow. From the curative to the preventive wow. and managerial. Okay. She began her nursing career from one of our big facilities, APSA, Bato Catholic Hospital, when she completed her nursing training in 1996. She was further posted to Home Municipal Hospital. Later, she went down north to Krachi East, which is now the Nchumbu Krachi West and East. From Krachi, our chairperson worked at Jasikan for 10 years. And went for further studies at the University of Cape Coast to pursue the policy. She was posted to Afajato Staff Health Directorate as the Deputy Public Health Nurse, where she worked for four years. Her hard work had her, her hard work has earned her an enviable position in the service by the then Volta Regional. Director of Health Service, where she was appointed as the acting uh, district director of health service for Akachi North District, where she worked for two years and was again transferred to Biakuye District, where she is the current district director of health service. We are not done. She is the president of the OT Regional Association of Municipal and District Directors of Health Service. Due to her love and passion for the adolescent, she was appointed as the regional focal person for adolescent health for the then Volta region, a position she still holds today. Our child person, our keynote speaker, sorry, was given an award of recognition for saving the life of a mother and her baby who couldn't reach the health facility by conducting an emergency delivery 
on the road in Dambai. This is yet another proof of a passionateness. She has interest in palliative care and home nursing. Ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, let us welcome our keynote speaker, our mother, the mother of the health service in Yaki I'll be laying emphasis on the address by the chairman of the association. Nana Chairperson, the regional director of health services. Togbeo Mamao, distinguished guests and fellow healthcare professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me. Welcome to the Regional Nurses Week lunch, where we gather to celebrate and honor our incredible nurses and midwives. Today, we embrace the team, our nurses, our midwives, our future. Recognizing the vital role nurses and midwives play in shaping the future of healthcare. When I was contacted to be the key speaker for this occasion with the team, I immediately thought about the recent migration of nurses and midwives in search for better opportunities outside the shores of Ghana. This migration abroad has made significant effect on the Ghanaian healthcare system. This phenomenon, commonly called or referred to as brain drain, occurs when highly skilled professionals leave their home to work in other countries. Often due to better working conditions, higher salaries, and improved career prospects. While migration can bring benefit to individuals and countries, it can also pose challenges for the health care system and communities left behind. The migration of nurses and midwives exacerbates the existing shortage of skilled professionals in Ghana. This shortage hampers the delivery of quality healthcare services, particularly in underserved areas and rural communities like ours. The migration of experienced nurses and midwives results in the loss of expertise and experience within the Ghanaian healthcare. I know this because as a district director of health service, I have had at least seven of my senior staff leaving posts for better opportunities abroad in 2022 alone. The effect of this recent trend may not be severe now, but as a country, we can envisage that soon we will have a deal, we will have to deal with a worse form of staff shortage when we are experiencing now, which will ultimately result in a negative impact on maternal and child health, aside its economic implications, which are glaring. Addressing the effects of nursing and midwives migrations require a multi-sectoral approach. The Ghanaian government and healthcare institutions can implement strategies such as improving working conditions and incentives and implementing retention programs. This requires a comprehensive and long-term strategy to ensure a sustainable healthcare workforce and the provision of quality healthcare services for the population. Nurses and midwives are the heart and soul of our healthcare system. They are the compassionate healers who dedicate their life to care for others. They are the tireless advocates who stand by our side during our most vulnerable moments. They are the guardian of our well-being, working selflessly around the clock to ensure our community receive a higher standard of care. 
Having worked as a nurse myself for several years before taking up a managerial role, I have experienced for how the effort nurses and midwives put in to ensure that a pregnant woman delivers safely or revive a dying patient. In these challenging times, our nurses and midwives have demonstrated unparalleled resilience, courage, and commitment. They have been at the forefront of the battle against COVID-19 global pandemic and other health challenges, working tirelessly to save lives, comfort the afflicted, and bring hope to those in despair. We have lost some of our colleagues in the process of trying to save lives during the pandemic, and this was just one of the many instances where nurses lost their lives in the process of saving others. I will do I will be doing myself and you all seated here and deserves the service if I pretend not to know the challenges we face as a profession. But despite these numerous challenges, nurses are making strides in various fields. They have been on wavering pillars of strength, providing care not only to their patients but also to their colleagues lifting the spirit and offering unvarying support. In recent years, we have had members of our noble profession taking up higher positions such as vice chancellor, whilst others are going into politics. Tobe Chairman. <laughs> Let me seize the opportunity to encourage members of these professions who have interest in policy making to join the political world. <laughs> while, your primary, while your primary focus is providing excellent healthcare services, there are several compelling reasons why nurses and midwives should also consider entering the realm of politics. Yeah. 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 Nurses and midwives have a wealth of expertise patient-centered perspectives, and a commitment to social justice that can greatly contribute to the political arena. By joining politics, they can shape healthcare <laughs> policies, advocate for patient and healthcare professionals, bridge the gap between policy and practice, uphold ethical standards, promote diversity, and strengthen healthcare system. Their involvement in politics can lead to positive change in healthcare and ultimately improve the well-being of individual families and communities. As we look to the future, it is essential that we recognize the immense value nurses and midwives bring to healthcare. They possess a unique blend of knowledge, skills, and compassion that is irreplaceable. Their expertise spans a wide range of specialities, from critical care to mental health, from maternal and child health to genetics, and everything in between. They are the frontline innovators, constantly seeking ways to improve patient outcome and enhance their overall healthcare experiences. However, the challenges facing our nurses and midwives cannot be overlooked. They are often overworked and under immense pressure, facing staffing shortage, shortages and ever-increasing demand. We must come together to address these issues, providing them with resources, support and recognition they deserve. By investing in their professional development, fostering a culture of well-being and ensuring their compensation we can create an environment that nurses and empowers our nursing workforce. But the future of nursing doesn't solely lie in the hands of nurses and midwives alone. It rests upon all of us, the healthcare leaders, policy makers, educators, and community members. We must join forces to create an ecosystem that fosters their growth, encourage encourages collaboration and promotes a culture of lifelong learning. 
Let us strengthen our commitment to nursing education, ensuring that our aspiring nurses and midwives receive the highest quality training and mentorship. Tobin Chairman, today I stand before you all to emphasize the critical need for quality nursing education in our region and country. To ensure the provision of exceptional healthcare services, we must invest in the education and training of our nursing workforce. This will prepare them to navigate the complexities of the healthcare landscape. Stay updated with the latest medical advancements and apply critical thinking to their practices. Through rigorous education program, nurses and midwives learn to assess, diagnose, and treat patients, ensuring accurate and timely intervention that saves lives. Furthermore, the healthcare fold is constantly evolving with new diseases, treatments, and technologies emerging. Nurses must be prepared to adapt and adjust, grow alongside us by receiving a strong educational foundation. Nurses are empowered to pursue continuous professional development, engage in research, and contribute to evidence-based practices that improve patient outcomes. The need for quality nursing education cannot be overstated. It is the cornerstone of a robust healthcare system that strives for excellence, safety, and patient-centered care. By providing nurses with the knowledge, skills, and competencies required for their role, we empower them to make a significant difference in the lives of their patients. Let us come together invest in quality nursing education and pave the way for a healthier and brighter future for all. Let us advocate for policies and priorities and prioritize the well-being of our nursing, such as providing scholarship for further studies, fostering a safe and supportive environment. Let us celebrate their achievements and raise awareness about the profound impact they have on our lives. Nurses and midwives are a backbone of healthcare and they hold the key to a brighter and healthier future. Together, let us acknowledge their invaluable contribution, empower them to lead and provide the necessary resources for, to transform their vision into reality. Today, as we launch Nurses Week in our region, let us honor our nurses and midwives. Standing united in gratitude, admiration and unwavering support. Together, we can shape a future where every nurse and midwife strive and our community flourish under their exceptional care. Thank you and let us embark on this journey together towards a future where our nurses and midwives continue to, to be the cornerstone of health, healthcare excellence. Thank you very much.